Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday presented by EMF Audio. This week we're covering subwoofer wiring. Something very simple but a lot of people don't seem to really understand. So this is one of our low baller 12s. Our entry level comes in a dual 4 and a dual 2 ohm. This one in particular is a dual 4 ohm. We connect the DMM right there. You see 3.7 ohms. 3.6 ohms, so that's a, a nominal reading. So each coil is going to read 3.6, 3.7 ohms as a, a normal thing. But we can't just use just one coil, we need to use both coils. The reason why is a whole other video. So there's two different ways that we can wire the sub, series and parallel. In a series configuration, you have a positive and a negative on this side a positive and negative on this side. And we're going to want to go from the positive of one coil to the negative of the other coil. And that's going to actually run the entire length of the coil on both ends to give us the added resistance. So now, if we connect the DMM to the positive on the one coil that is not being used, the negative on the other coil, so it's not being used, so you'd run this positive to the positive on the amp and the negative on the negative to the amp to be in proper phasing. You can now see 7.3 ohms, 7.2 ohms. So, so it's going to be double what it would be from the individual coils. So that's in series. Now one reason you might use it in series is say you had a 2 ohm amplifier but dual 1 ohm coils. You'd wire it up to 2 ohms instead of a half ohm which would be in parallel. But also if you're using multiple subs. So if we had two of these we could wire it in series up to the 7.3 ohms and then parallel both of those subs that would bring it back down to 4 ohms if we we're using a 4 ohm amplifier. What we're going to look at now is actually parallel wiring. So what I just mentioned about putting the two subs together we're going to do on one sub. So we've got a positive on this coil and a negative And on this side, we want to connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. So now if we check these, bouncing around a little bit because I'm moving the sub and it's face down but see the impedance has gone down to just under 2 ohms so that being said this is what you would use if you had maybe a 1 ohm amp and a dual 2 speaker so it would be 2 ohms and 2 ohms parallel them down that would give you the 1 ohm if we had the sub in series, how we just had it before, but you had multiple subs, this is where you would connect all of your positives together and all your negatives together. And that's how you would bring the load back down. So, another point, since I just kind of demonstrated that, when you're testing a coil, you don't want to have it face down. I did this so it's easier to see on video. But you also saw how the impedance changed when the speaker moved. So I'm going to show that where they're not connected to anything. So we're reading 3.9, but if we move just a hair, you can see it changing. So if you're ever checking impedance of a coil, you want to have it to where it can't move.
we'll connect our positive and negative. You'll see it's very steady. We can barely move it and it changes a lot. So that also applies if you're in a very loud area where any movement can happen at all. If there's another system playing, if it's windy outside, anything like that, that impedance is not going to read correctly. Uh, if it is mounted in a box, as long as nothing else around is moving, everything should be fine. But if there's any kind of vibration going on, it will change that reading. So make sure you have everything in a uh, non-moving, uh, not windy, quiet area when you check impedance. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, go and hit that subscribe button. You can check out all of our products 24 hours a day and order online from emfcaraudio.com. Keep a lookout for all of our continued videos on Tuesdays by hitting the bell notification so you get notifications when we upload new videos.